unique and exciting that you actually had a pain clinic looking at outcomes for people with cancer. So I was really excited to see that you actually were building a program, something that I don't have where I live. I think what you have here is an exceptional to have your own pain service amongst the anesthesiologist. You're seeing the patients from start to finish. So you can actually pick up patients that you can treat and help when nobody else knows that. You have a beautiful team, a large team and a lot of supports, which is increasingly rare. I say it's my magic wand because there are so many exceptional uses. And in fact, I think in the years to come, we are gonna be treating more and more things. It's already used to treat cancer. It, it's one of the original uses of cryo neurolysis and cryosurgery is to treat and kill cancers. And now we can use it to treat the pain. We can use it to treat the muscle and disorders. We can use it to treat the stiffness. So it's so incredible that you have it here, but five years from now, there's going to be more and more reasons to use crown neurolysis. It, it's gonna be exceptional. I think the future is coming. I really impressed upon your team is that you are experts in peripheral nerves and treating pain, but cryo is this incredibly powerful tool to stop abnormal muscle movements that you picked up very quickly, that we can be treating all these muscle disorders that patients get from really complex surgeries. The, Every cancer patient has a different surgery based on their reconstruction and their debulking, so you now have one more tool to help that patient feel better. And I was early in my medical school training and we had small group learning and the small group leader happened to be a physiatrist or physical medicine or rehab doctor. She focused on spinal cord injury and she focused, um, she used to work uh, with the Royal Winnipeg Ballet, uh, treating dancers and artists, but also people with severe neurologic disorders. For the, the spinal cord injury part, they actually took us to the spinal cord injury hospital and they taught and they had real patients and we examined the real patients. Everything they taught, we actually saw a patient with that problem right away. And for me, it was like from that day on, like this is what I want to do. I, I grew up um, analyzing movement and teaching. If you have a movement goal, it's not going to happen today. When I look at my patients, trying to figure out what is going on, why is the patient having this problem? And I find my dance background, I just look a little bit different than other people. I'm always trying to figure out why did this problem happen to that person? And I find from my background, it was a little bit more, it's going to be work in progress. We're going to we're gonna get the, the technique down, the movement down, then we're gonna finesse it, and then we're gonna keep figuring out why it's not getting better. And for my patients, I feel like, I'm like, okay, but you said you wanna do more, or they tell me, you know, Dr. Winston, it's not enough. Okay, let's start over. What is it that you want? So I really feel like the dance gave me an eye, but it also gave me a critical lens where we can continue to improve until everyone's happy. The kind of magic of cryo is you do the treatment and it's done. The patient is better. And in general, they continue to get better, but it becomes so emotionally moving for the patient and the clinician because what you do, you know in real time. So cryo is like a real time microsurgery with no scars and no healing. So for me, I realized that you were in complete control to give the patient what they wanted and the patient can tell you what they want. So cryo is so real time that you are getting the results that you want to get. And it also allows you to tell patients, you know, this is the best I can do. But then what's crazy is that we've been treating muscle disorders for so long, but this is a pain technique. So we, we, we're adding in pain, so patients have pain and we can actually treat their pain. So you, you've, you've fixed multiple problems or they literally will tell you, oh, can you fix this, this? So for me, the biggest difference is that the micro precision, the instant feedback, but they're dramatic results. But cryo gives us much greater movement and strength. Like, you know, I've never fed myself a French fry in my life. I'm 47 years old, and they're communicating with a language board with one finger or their, with their eyes, or 
a patient will say, I can now hold my hand, husband's hand with my bad hand. And for 10 years, I wanted to do that because everybody looks. And now we hold my bad hand and nobody knows. It's, there, it's hard for me to answer just because my head just explodes with these stories of people doing things that are so mundane and so normal for all of us, but for them, it's like Everest. So those are the stories, but it's patients that say, oh, hey, you treated my next door neighbor, that little boy, and he comes running in my house every day now just to show how fast he can run. So I'm like, don't listen to me. Listen to the people, watch the videos, see them change, and then tell me, is this real or not? I want you to see the difference. I don't want to tell you it's better. I don't want you to read a research study. And I want you to watch, and if you know nothing about medicine, I want you to look and say, oh my God, that is crazy what the person can do. What's your goal? Because it has to be realistic. Like we can't, some people can run and feed themselves and play sports. So the first thing is we have to have very realistic goals with the patient to say, yeah, I think I can help you, uh, but these are the limitations of where I can help because we don't want to come across as like we know better than other people. But we have many patients that we say, you know what, when this is done, you're going to be doing your hair, cooking dinner and running up the stairs. A new treatment might help you and we're willing to take that chance with you. Make sure the treatment makes sense. Make sure the treatment doesn't come with side effects and doesn't put you at risk. So what I think you have here is very special because um, rehabilitation is forgotten. But the person has to live every day. They have to get up and make breakfast and look after their kids. They have to dress. Yeah, the patient, we got to keep them alive. We, we, we have to tell every patient, if something goes wrong, it's our fault, it's our responsibility, but you have to tell us. You have to have our trust that we will do everything possible to help you.